welcome everyone as we gather for worship uh, this Father's Day. And on that note, I'd like to uh, wish all the uh, fathers a happy Father's Day, spiritual fathers, a happy Father's Day. Um, the men that are in our lives that have, have helped us to grow and have influenced us and have been there for, with a shoulder to cry on or a good word to lift us up. Uh, I'd like to wish a happy Father's Day to you also. Uh, it's quite evident that within our lives that it's there are people within our lives that help to uh, help us to grow and we too often can uh, leave them out when we're thinking about uh, wishing people happy Father's Day and for the mothers uh, out there who are also kind of playing a double role of mother and father uh, happy Father's Day to you too it is I just want to say thank you to the many different people who helped to uh, help each of us to grow. Uh, so on that note, I would also like to uh, welcome uh, everyone who's joined us, whether you're from Gordonville or Arthur, from Damascus, uh, Monk, Mount Forest, whether you're joining us from London or uh, from somewhere else in the world, whether you are a family or a friend, uh, whether you're just checking us out for the first time. It is great to have you and to, to be able to come together in this time of worship. So as we uh, join together, there are, there's one, uh, one or two announcements. Uh, the first is uh, that the Gordonville session will be meeting Monday, uh, June 22nd at 7 p.m. Uh, and the Arthur session will be meeting on Wednesday, uh, June 24th, again at 7 p.m. Uh, part of the discussions uh, for both of those is uh, the possibilities of reopening what we need to do uh, to be able to provide a safe uh, and worshipful experience honoring uh, God, but also of each, honoring each of you. Uh, so we're gonna be discussing what needs to be done. Uh, we're gonna be looking at things that we will be continuing on, uh, whether it's uh, recording or doing a dual live stream. Uh, that might be happening at one service versus the other, uh, which is a little bit easier. So there's different aspects of things that will be happening there. Uh, I believe we will be definitely doing, whether it's live streaming or pre-recorded services uh, for people that aren't able to come out or don't feel comfortable coming out at this time. Uh, and as we progress through, uh, we do not have a set date. Uh, we are looking at what needs to happen and what we feel will be the best uh, process and protocols uh, to be honoring uh, to each of you, but also to be honoring to God in our worship. Uh, so these are different things that we will be looking at. If there's anything else uh, that you'd like the session to be looking at or talking about, uh, please speak to one of, your, uh, one of the elders. Uh, that'd be very helpful, or speak to myself. Uh, one thing that I would be, uh, that I'd be curious of to hear is how people are feeling about the prospect of, of reopening, whether we should, uh, whether, whether you are, are looking forward to the uh, prospect or whether you want to wait and see how things progress or you're kind of just, you're happy where you are uh, and want to continue on 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 way things are. Uh, each one is, uh, we, we're, we're not looking down on, on any of them. Um, we want to just hear from where you're feeling uh, and what you're thinking on, on all these things. So that's that would be very helpful for us as we are progressing through uh, the planning stages. I know there are a number of churches uh, that opened up this past weekend. There's some that are opening up uh, this weekend. Uh, and there will be some that are holding off until sometime in the fall. Uh, so there's a lot of different uh, breadth of uh, what people are doing. So we're looking at all of the options and how to do this in an honoring way and but also in a safe way. So your feedback would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for that. And as we uh, join together in worship, I'd like to take this moment to say thank you to a number of people. Uh, one is uh, Aislinn is going to be doing the scripture readings this morning. So thank you to Aislinn. Uh, also thank you to Joyce, who uh, was, is the accompanist uh, and also of one of the vocalists this morning. Uh, I'd also like to thank Judy, who continually uh, puts together the uh, PowerPoint. So thank you very much. And thank you uh, to the elders who are continuing to work, uh, do, continuing with uh, pastoral care, uh, reaching out, con connecting with people. So it's, uh, that is very helpful. Thank you very much. And uh, I just want to say thank you to the many people who are 
who are continuing to work together to uh, provide ministry, to provide connection. Uh, and I encourage us to continue to reach out to each other uh, in this time, even though as things are opening up and things are, are becoming a little bit more like they were, uh, there's still a great deal of anxiety. There's still a great deal of uh, trepidation for a number of people. So I encourage you to keep uh, reaching out, keep calling, keep uh, checking in on people. This is part of what the body of Christ does. Uh, we care for each other. And that is one of the most inviting things, uh, my, one of the most inviting aspects of being part of a community of faith is that we're cared for. We're not just a number, but we're a person who is dearly loved by the community and by God. So as on that note, I invite us to... Uh, to uh, take part in the responsive call to worship, and I uh, turn it over to Aislinn, who will be leading us in the responsive call to worship. Responsive reading is Psalm 86. I will do the L, and everyone else does the A. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous, wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, insolent man, ha men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maid servant. Show me a sign of your favor that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Let us join our voices together, my friends, as we sing, This is my Father's World. Oh, 
it's always good to be able to, to join together and sing a, a familiar hymn. So as we uh, take this time now, invite us to bow our hearts before the Lord in prayer. So let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather together in worship, as we gather together in this time of praising your holy name, of hearing your word, of laying down our burdens before you. Lord, we come into your holy presence. We recognize your greatness. You are the one whose very voice has spoken all of creation into existence. Lord, you're, you have called us as your people. Lord, your voice speaks into our hearts and into our minds. It reminds us of your deep love for us. But Lord, as we hear your words, as we enter into your holy presence, we are confronted by our own sinfulness, our own willingness to turn away from you, to forget your words, to rebel against you. We are reminded of the many times that our lips have spoken lies about you, that our hearts have doubted your, your words validity where our minds have sought to find other ways. Lord, we have not always given you the glory. We have not always treated you with the honor and respect that you rightly deserve. We have not treated you as a holy God. Too often we have belittled you. We have put you below us. We have blasphemed against you. Forgive us, Lord. And help us to walk in the ways of truth. Help us to, to speak your name with love and compassion. Help us to remember your greatness. To fear you, but also to find safety in you. That we know that you are all-powerful, but also all-loving. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' holy name. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us turn our attention now to the uh, mission moment. World Refugee Day, which was June 20th. No one chooses to be a refugee. Inspired by God's promise of abundant life, Presbyterian World Service and Development, PWSD, uh, envisions a world where no human has to fear for their life or liberty. Refugee sponsorship has enabled refugees from all over the world to find peace, encouragement, and stability in a new home. This Refugee Day, we are thankful for the congregations and groups across Canada who, with support from PWSD, make refugee sponsorship possible. Together in 2019, we were able to welcome 77 people. Hand in hand, we will continue to welcome those in need who are trying to find security and safety. I invite us to join together as we sing Father, I Adore You. And we're going to sing the whole song through uh, once, and then uh, Joyce and I are going to split off, and we're going to do it in a little bit of a round. Uh, if you want to uh, sing along the round, uh, that'd be great. If not, uh, join in as you wish or enjoy. So let us join together as we sing, Father, I Adore You.
So my friends, as we uh, take this time to uh, turn our attention to the Sunday School time, I invite us to uh, watch a video. It's by the Skit Guys. And you might remember the Skit Guys. We've seen them, uh, different videos from them uh, throughout uh, the years. And I'd like to invite us to watch. It's a cute video on talking about what Dad says. Uh, and I, it's, I, I was laughing. I hope you enjoy it also. And as we watch it, it will come back in a few minutes. No matter how old we are, we always remember what our dads say and do. My dad is more like Jesus than your dad. Nuh-uh. My dad doesn't let anybody eat any food until we pray for it. My dad prays for one minute every day. You know what? Our church has pancakes. This is what my sister and mom use for their blush. My dad says that mean kids never know what they're talking about. Because their parents don't know what they're talking about either. My dad says to punch meanies in the face. Then my mom says, don't ever do that. And my dad goes to time out. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's beard is itchy whenever he kisses me. My dad takes me to church so we could learn to be just like Jesus. My daddy prays for me. Then he makes me stop talking and go to bed. Then I get a flashlight and read my comic book. That's a sin. He's sinning. No, I'm not. Sinner. No, I'm not. R2, R2, R2. My dad said that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. My dad never stays mad at me. My dad taught me to forgive, because Jesus forgives us every time we ask. I want a mohawk. I wish I had hair. It's OK. Your hair will probably grow back. Thanks for being our dads for all our lives. I don't know about you, but I could picture uh, my dad saying a few of those things, and some of the th those things my dad probably wouldn't say, um, but it's, it, it was wonderful just seeing the different reactions, and they, I think they did an excellent job on that, and I was wondering, uh, could you picture some of those things, your dad saying some of those things? Uh, whether your dad's right next to you and you're kind of looking at him, or whether you're remembering in your heart uh, the many things that your, your dad has said to you. I invite us to just take that time to just think about the important things that our dad has said and that, we've, that have stuck with us, uh, that have been an encouragement, or maybe it's things that a grandfather has said, or an uncle, or a brother, or maybe it's a coach or a teacher. And maybe it's even uh, things that your mom has said. Uh, and at this time, instead of uh, showing a coloring page for us to do, I invite us to draw a picture, uh, a favorite memory, um, whether it's of what sort of acting out what uh, your dad has said or just a precious time that you had with him. I know for myself, as I always come back to one time, and I think my dad and I always only went fishing one time, and it really wasn't a big fishing expedition. It was down into a creek that uh, I'm not sure if there was actually any fish that would have gone through this creek, but we went down and it was an old fishing rod and it was a memorable time. It wasn't anything spectacular, but it was something different that my dad and I did. Um, and just, it was just a wonderful time of just being with my dad. So I just invite you to take that time, whether it's drawing a picture or, or telling someone about about a time with your dad. So let's take a moment and we'll come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the men in our lives, the men in our lives who have helped us to grow, who have helped us to, through tough times, have also helped us to know what it means to love and to be loved. 
Lord, we, we think of you also. We thank, thank you that you are our Heavenly Father, who is beyond compare, who loves us and who shows grace to us and is forgiving, more so than the best dad that we could possibly imagine. And Lord, as we come today, we come also knowing that there are many people who struggle with, with what it means to, to know a father. For some, they will never be able to know the love of a father because their dad ha- is not with them and has never been with them. For some, they, the love that their father showed wasn't love at all. It was something wrong. Lord, we pray for healing. Lord, there are some that are missing their fathers. They're missing their embrace. They're missing their gentle smile. They're missing their humility and the deep love that they showed. They're missing their faithfulness. And for others, they are sitting right next to them, loving them and receiving love as you have shown us what it means to be loved and to love. Lord, we thank you for the many people in our lives who have walked with us, who have helped to strengthen us, but also helped us to know what it means to be gentle, to be kind, to be humble. Lord, as we gather today and as we think about our world, Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for healing in families, in lives, in souls, in minds, and hearts. We pray for healing from the coronavirus, from cancer. We pray for healing from heart problems, from strokes, from chronic pain. Lord, we pray for healing from abuse, from fear, from hatred. Lord, we pray for healing from the systems that keep putting people down. Lord, we pray for healing from the blindness that people have and are unable to see the struggles of others. Help us to be able to see through others' eyes. Help us to be able to see how you see, Lord. That we don't just see with our own biases and our own filters, but we see with the grace and a mercy that comes from you. Lord, guide us in your truth. Guide us in your healing. That we might be whole and help others to be whole. As you have led us and redeemed us, help us to share your good news. Help us to point others in the direction of the depth of grace and mercy that you have given us. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are serving you in places that we don't know the names of, but we know that you are present there. In churches that have no walls, but are flourishing with life. For communities that are struggling with death, but are coming together to experience new life in you. Lord, as we turn to your word once again, guide us in your truth. Break down the walls and the barriers in our lives that keep us from hearing your words. Help us to work even in those uncomfortable truths that you have for us. Help us to see the truth that you bring into our lives and help us to live for you. May your word be a guide, a lamp unto our feet. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, my friends, I invite us to turn our attention to God's word, and Aislinn will be leading us through through the readings. So let us hear God's word. The scripture readings for this morning are Genesis 21, 8 to 21, and Matthew 10, 24 to 39. And the child grew and, he, and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, laughing. 
So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not be here with my son Isaac. And the thing was very displeasing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, be not displeased because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for through Isaac shall your offspring be named. And I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, let me not look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice, the boy and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the, his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house feasible, how much more will they mail, malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden. That will not be known what I tell you in the dark. Say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear them who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fail to the, fall to the ground apart from your father, but even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to my earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. <clears throat> and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life who lives it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We're continuing on our massive series called uh, The In-Between Times, looking at the uh, in-between time of Jesus, Jesus' ministry, and then he uh, ro rose from the grave. Uh, he's ascended into heaven, and then it's the sending of the church. Uh, and then there's a time that will come. And as we look even at this, is, this uh, pattern is actually repeated uh, in the Old Testament. And look at the in-between times from receiving the promise to the realization of the promise. And there's a great deal of time in between. There's a great deal of life in between. And as we uh, look at the in-between times, as we're living in right now, the in-between times of before COVID to whatever will happen after, Whatever God uh, brings about, we are living in this time 
that seems very much in between two points. And the reality is, is that we are always living in between uh, two different times, what was and what will be, and we live in that present. So as we look at the in-between times, as we look at the scriptures day, and we're going to be uh, camping out again in uh, the book of Genesis, looking at Abraham and Sarah, um, and focusing on uh, that scripture reading from, from the book of Genesis. And as we hear, uh, as we've heard uh, from, the, from the reading, we see a lot of uncomfortable truths. And these uncomfortable truths um, we, we struggle with. We're not quite sure what to do, to do with. And I have to admit that I've read this chapter many times before. But this, chap but this time I read this chapter. I have to admit I struggled with it a little bit more. And part of it is a reality of, of what we're living in right now. Uh, with all the different tensions uh, that are going on around the world, whether it is from, from the virus and the different uh, problems that it has brought up within our society, within the systems around us, or whether we look at the broader picture of racism and how that has has affected us, sometimes we don't even realize how much it does affect us and how it affects us as we're reading other things. And as I looked at this, at, at this section of scripture, I started to look at it from a different perspective. Usually I just pass over and it's like, God will take care of it. But I struggled with what, what God had said and with what the Abraham and Sarah had done. So before we, we move forward, I think it's important that we give a little bit of a backstory here. Now, if we remember from last week, we uh, heard about uh, these visitors that came and met with Abraham and told Abraham and Sarah that they would have a child, and Sarah laughed. He, she didn't believe that this was possible because they were fairly old. They were past a time when most people would have children. And yet God said, this will happen. You will be with child. And when we read in between uh, last week's and this week's, a lot happened. Sarah still really didn't believe the promise that God had made to her. So she had uh, a servant named Hagar, um, and she gave Hagar to Abraham hoping that Abraham and Hagar would have a child. And Hagar became pregnant, but so did, um, so did Sarah. And this is where part of the problem began, is that both Sarah and Hagar uh, bore Abraham uh, two sons, uh, one son each, Ishmael, and Isaac. And then what followed from that was uh, jealousy, fear, greed, and also a lack of faith. And now as we, as we picture it, as we heard from the scripture reading today, that Sarah had initiated all of these different, uh, different things putting the dominoes in place, that suddenly they were all falling down. And she was afraid that her son Isaac wouldn't get as much of an inheritance as Ishmael. Or that for some reason uh, there would be a family dispute. And so she asked Abraham to send Hagar and Ishmael on their way. Part of it was out of the fear of, of what this could mean to herself and to her son Isaac. Part of it was greed, part of it was jealousy. But it comes down to a true lack of faith. That, there, that God had said he would do something and she didn't believe that he could do it. So Sarah went about and made things happen 
by herself. And the reality is, is that when I had read this before, it was fairly simple. It was a simple story of this is what's happened. These are the people involved. God was there. But as I read it uh, this week, I was struck by how I, could, how I could see a different point of view and not fully understand it, don't get me wrong. But for the most part, I could understand Abraham and Sarah beforehand. And suddenly I am I'm looking at this from Hagar and Ishmael's perspective and asking, is this right? Now, I know the, 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 the reality of it is, is that we're probably going to try to switch right and fair uh, for words. And we realize that life isn't fair. And that's why I use the word right. Could this have happened differently? Should this have happened differently? And as we are living in our world, and as we are growing and understanding the people around us, and as we are are taking the opportunity to look at the world from a different perspective, we can see scripture in a different way. The reality is, is that this story is not just a simple story anymore. It is a story about corruption of people because of power. It is the corruption of of those who have a say versus those who don't. It is the story of those who are used and what they're used for. And it is a troubling story. And it's a strange story as we focus on Father's Day, and yet there is a reality that is still present today is when we read Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, that there is a great deal that we can bring from this story. One of the things that struck me in the, as I was working through it this week that one of the big failures here is the failure to live in God's promise. And what I mean by that is that we can hear the promises of God. It comes into our ears. It rests in our mind. It rests in our heart. But does it go any farther? Do we trust in God enough that as he has promised he will do, do we trust that he will fulfill those promises? Or do we also, like Sarah and like Abraham, because they're both in this together, have a failing to trust God, to really live in that promise? Yes, you can receive the promise, but you can also file it on a shelf. Are you going to live in that promise? Are you going to believe that what God has said he will do, he will do? And this is a struggle of this story. Because God had given the promise. God had given multiple promises. One was that Abraham would have descendants that outnumbered the stars in the sky and the sands on the earth. And God had promised that he would have a child, that him and Sarah would have a child. And yet somewhere along the line, they didn't believe, or they tried to make things happen the way they thought it should happen, because they did not trust that God can do what they saw as impossible, but that God makes possible. Sarah and Abraham's lack of faith in God's promise produced this problem that we hear about today where Sarah is going to Abraham and saying, you've got to send them off. This isn't going to work. 
So Abraham sends him off. Now, we have to remember something here. That God said to Abraham, listen to what your wife says. And, and a lot of times, we, we can pass by this verse and we think, God just gave permission. But I wonder if we pass by this verse a little bit too quickly. And yes, God's saying get, that Abraham has permission to send Hagar and Ishmael off. However, I wonder if Abraham could have done what would have been right. Now, there's a number of different places where Abraham could have done what uh, could have been right. That he could have said to Sarah, no, I'm not taking Hagar. She's a person. She's not property. I am going to trust God that he is going to fulfill this, that I'm not going to try to make it happen the way I understand things. He could have said no to Sarah when Hagar, when she asked for Hagar and Ishmael to be sent away. He could have done what is right. He could have cared for those who's called to be a blessing too. Instead, throughout this, we have people being treated as property. Both Sarah and Abraham could have chosen to keep Hagar and Ishmael with them. Yes, it would have been difficult. But life itself is difficult. The reality is, they could have made choices earlier on that would have been right. But they didn't. And here is where I struggle because normally when we get to the point of, of sending Hagar and Ishmael off, it just seems, well, God's already said okay. And yet, I ponder here, I stop and look at this and say, what right does Abraham and Sarah have to do this? They have both changed Hagar and Hagar's life she is now having to leave everything she's known. And even though God said it's okay, I wonder if he was challenging Abraham to do what was right, to continue to care for them, provide for them, Help them to grow, to truly be the blessing that God said he would be. And it comes back to this, that he was supposed to be a blessing to many nations, and yet within his own family, he struggled to be a blessing to them. And also the, what is passed on through Scripture, through the Old Testament and the New Testament, to care for the widow, the orphan, and the foreigner. They're all people. And how is Abraham not caring for his, his own son and Hagar? Now we do know the rest of the story. We do know that God does meet Hagar and Ishmael. And he does provide for them. But we also see this, the problems that happened within the family unit here of Abraham and Sarah and how God was part of it, but they didn't trust God, except when it was easy. How many times are we like that? where we hear the word of God and when it seems impossible, we try to make it our own way and we end up creating more problems than what we realize. 
or we listen when it's a simple, easy task or it fits our narrative. It fits what we want to do within our hearts. But we struggle to do what is right. We struggle to truly follow the depth of what God is leading us to do. Abraham had many outstanding things that he did. He was a promise carrier of God. He was not perfect. He was an example that sometimes people can do really great things and choose very poor, poorly. And we have to remember that in our own lives. As we look at the world around us, as we look at people around us, we need to look beyond our simple understandings and look deeper. We can see things for our own lens, but are we willing to see things through other people's eyes? for other people's hearts. But when it comes down to, and this is where I think it's very important that we remember this, because there has been struggles and theological debates um, over people's reality. There are people that have grown up with an absent father. There have been people that have, have lived with in a relationship that wasn't equal, that wasn't fair, that wasn't right. But here it is in the end, that no matter how our earthly father has or does or will treat us, our heavenly father is always there for us. Too often we think that God's nowhere to be found Too often we judge God by our own experiences or lack thereof. And yet just because someone on this, in our lives, on this planet, has treated us a certain way, doesn't mean that God is going to treat us the same way. If this is any example, God loved Abraham, loves Abraham, loves Sarah but he also loves Hagar and Ishmael. And Ishmael, he promised, would become a great nation. Do we trust God's promise? Do we believe in God's promise? Do we believe that he will do what he said he will do? Or do we try to make things out to to happen in the way that we think that they can happen? Do we trust that God is there with us? Even when we have, ex- have bad experiences in our life from other people, do we trust that our Heavenly Father is greater than all those experiences? That his love for us is not based on someone else's love for us, It is based on his own love that comes from himself and is shared with each of us and with this world. My friends, our Heavenly Father loves each and every one of us more than we can possibly imagine. And that is a truth that is written all through scriptures. Is a truth that is realized in Jesus Christ. It is a truth that we are reminded of in the book of Revelation. When we look to that time when we will be with God, we will be his people, and he will wipe every tear from our eyes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are are more loving than we know. We thank you that you care for us more than we can imagine. We thank you, Lord, that when we ourselves fail, 
you are there. Not to mock us, but to lift us up. That when we fail to help others, you are there because you love each person. Lord, it doesn't give us an excuse to, do, to not do what is right. Lord, help us. Help us to truly listen and believe and live in your promise. Not just give it lip service, but to trust you with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole body, and our whole soul. Help us to live as you, would call, as you have called us to live. Help us to continue to share the blessing that you gave to Abraham, that he would be a blessing to many nations. Lord, help us to share in that blessing and to share that blessing with others. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our closing hymn today is, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. We sometimes forget how much God really does love each and every one of us. Let us join together singing uh, this, this hymn of faith, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
So my friends, as we go from this time of worship, may God's blessing go with you. May his Holy Spirit guide you to do what is right, not just what is easy. May you go in the peace and the love of Jesus Christ, who guides us through the storm, who quiets the winds, and reaches out and brings us above the waves. May we go today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Let us join our voices together one more time and, and sing together, Go in Love. excellent experience to be able to come to worship with you uh, at this time and to think about the different times and when we will be worshiping together and to think about the time when we'll be able to gather together. But we, no matter what, we are joined together through the Holy Spirit. So it has been an honor to worship with you this morning. Uh, for those after the 11 o'clock service, uh, we will be uh, joining together if, you'd, if you're uh, interested in a Zoom chat. The uh, link uh, will be on the Facebook page uh, if you're, and also emailed out if you're uh, on the email list. So thank you very much and have a blessed day. Until next time, my friends, be at peace.